Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I've got my regular Friday reads and um, sadly the number of finished books is much lower than I wanted it to be, but things just are the way they are, aren't they? Um, I don't even know what I've been doing with myself. Just can't seem to concentrate much. So I have two books that came in to the house this week. This one I already thought I owned. I couldn't find it in one of my TBR videos. Here it is. It's the third in the Catherine Coulter J.T. Ellison series. My mom just finished reading it. It was at her house. So I've got this back. That can go downstairs with the rest of them. And then through paperback swap, I got this copy of The Distant Hours by Kate Morton. I've never read her before, but I suspect I will like her stuff very much. Um, and I was just missing this one and one other. So I thought, well, I have credits. I might as well order them since it's a free book. And who doesn't like that these days? So that came in. Now I have finished four books this week. The first of them is Thanks to Cousin at Always Doing. It is Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. This is the first in the series. I don't know how many books there are. There are quite a few, though. And um, it's science fiction romance. And it's so good. I mean, it was really, really good. It was fun. It, I liked the world building a lot. That sounds really strange. But the whole planet where they land. So, so this group of girls, they're all 22. They're all from all over the world. They get abducted by little green men, little green aliens. Um, some of them are in like sleeping pods. Some of them are just like sort of bonus or extra ones. And our main character here is one of the bonus ones. So one of the other girls has a translator in her ear so she can understand what the aliens are saying. And they find out that, I forget what the reasoning is, but they have to essentially ditch the girls and ditch the ship and take a smaller ship. These aliens take a smaller ship and leave the cargo to come back for later. So they ditch them on this island and on this planet that is winter all the time. It's ice, it's freezing cold. And after a couple of days of near starvation, the main girl in this book, whose name I totally forget, which is terrible, she has to go out. She offers, she's the last, least injured. She offers to go out and try and, you know, forage for food or something and runs into this big blue alien. Um, and I liked their relationship. I liked, um, I mean, the whole planet is so interesting. I know I said the people just a little minute ago, but like all the creatures that are there that are out to get them and what they're called, like the Mertlaps and these weird fish things that look like they are, it just looks like bamboo coming out of this um, like hot spring, oh, like a river. But as soon as you get closer, you pull one, then it like comes and it will devour you like in two seconds or something. And um, the trees are pink and willowy and kind of juicy. They have juicy bark. And I don't know. I liked the world building and the setting as much as I liked the relationship between the main woman and the big blue alien. Um, and there's something about like a soulmate match. And I, I just, it was so delightful. I read it, I think in 24 hours or a little less than that. You know, it was just really, it took me out of myself and it was entertaining as heck. So I am over halfway through the second one right now. And I really, really enjoyed this one. So if it's at all interesting to you, a romance novel with big blue aliens on a freezing cold planet, um, check it out. <laughs> I think this one is free on Amazon Prime. Don't quote me on that though. And then the other book I finished that was an ebook was... Oh my gosh, Mr. Churchill's Secretary by Susan Elia McNeil. This is the start to her Maggie Hope series. It's a mystery series. It's, um, I suppose it's cozy because it's not super bloody and gory, but if that's the only qualification, then I read enough other cozy mysteries that are cozy. This doesn't seem like that to me. This, this reminds me of the um, <sighs> Maisie Dobbs series by Jacqueline Winspear. So this is set, our main girl, Maggie Hope, is working for, gets a job for Churchill um, right before the Blitz starts, right before London starts getting bombed. As one of his, she's one of his secretaries and she's living in a house that her aunt, she inherited from her aunt who passed away. She is British born, but American, grew up in America, grew up outside of Boston and is back in England now, theoretically just to sell the house. 
and then come back home, but then war starts and she's kind of stuck there. So she has some girls who become friends who rent the house with her or living in London and you know, all this stuff. So it's part of her life is working for Churchill and helping crack codes and things. She is really brilliant. She's a mathematician. You think because she's a woman that they're not promoting her exactly and that's what it seems like, but that's not necessarily the case. Um, her parents died in a car accident when she was a baby and has been raised by her aunt in Boston. So no family really, but you know, she goes to find her parents' grave site one day and then just her mom is there, but her dad isn't there. So she thinks, oh God, is he alive? So that's one thing, one threat is her trying to find her father if he is or isn't alive. One is her relationship with her friends in London and um, how they're getting on and adapting and uh, one's an actress and one is working as a nurse and um, oh my gosh, there's so many storylines in here. I'm trying to keep them straight and I really can't. <sighs> Suffice to say, I inhaled this book. I read it in four hours one night thanks to insomnia I mean it really kept me up it was really really good I read so this is terrible I can't get my thoughts right for this book it's awful I rated the book four and a half stars though so it's really good um this is going to be the jumblest review most jumbled review ever so our girl Maggie has adventures all over the place she travels a little bit in England um one of the storylines is that there is a spy working um, close to Maggie somehow and trying to bring down Churchill, trying to murder him. And you don't know, you know that eventually like, they drop into this spy storyline occasionally. And I couldn't figure out for the life of me who the spy was in Maggie's life because everyone seems so up and up except for one person but that seemed too obvious and it kind of was too obvious um so you find out who the spy is eventually and all the storylines that are should be wrapped up get wrapped up at the 80 percent mark and then i thought well what the heck happens for the rest of it and then it's like a twist and a twist and a twist and a twist it just kind of kept going and i couldn't believe it i had to turn the light on sit up in bed and <laughs> really finish reading it as it was so interesting to me i was just i just loved it so i am anxiously awaiting a used copy to come to me for the second book in the series. I just, it was so much fun and I really, really enjoyed it. Whew, that ramble is over and done with. To the two physical books I finished, Nellie Custis's Diary by Miriam Ann Bourne. Now, this is one of the first books I think I held up on this channel and talked about, and I marked it as read last year. And then I was picking up going through my books and everything, and I thought, I never finished this. Hang on a second. So I finished it finally. <laughs> um, Nellie Custis was George Washington's gr uh, granddaughter. So this book is based on Nellie Custis's life and it's on letters that Nellie herself wrote and received, letters from her husband, uh, the letters and diaries of George Washington and George Washington Lafayette and um, Mount Vernon journals and so it's all based in fact here. What is Martha Washington wrote and other members of the Washington household, um, Robert Lewis's journal, bills and other records at Mount Vernon and Woodlawn, mementos of the Washington family. So it's all based on real things. And she's, I mean, she is a real person. She existed. So this was really delightful. I'm really happy I finally finished it officially. Um, and I makes me want to go down a little Google rabbit hole and look up Nellie and her life. And yeah, I just, I really liked it. Three and a half stars. And then the last one I finished is Glass Town by Isabel Greenberg. This is based on the Brontes fictional city world of Glass Town. And, um, oh my gosh, what is Ang Ang Angola? No. I forget the two cities that come out of here, but all the characters and everything. So this setup for this book, um, Isabel Greenberg's art, in case you haven't seen it, she has a muted color palette, which seems sort of like an odd choice at first, and then you just fall right into it and you're right there with her. So the story is based, it starts 
um, when Charlotte is the only one surviving, she's the only one left, and one of the characters comes to visit her on the moors. So she go to so look back through her life and through the life of her siblings around Glass Town, in Glass Town. Their real life, you know, it goes way back in time and it comes forward again slowly. And, you know, it was really enjoyable and it makes me really want to read more about Glass Town and the Brontes in particular. But if you are a fan of Brontes at all, or Isabel Greenberg for that matter, pick it up, four stars. It was really, really delightful. Very happy to have read that one. Um, what's coming up uh, Saturday is Dewey's Readathon. So I have my stack of about 15 books here. <laughs> I keep adding to them, which is typical. And I'm sure I, like half of them I won't read. I'll just read something else that catches my fancy. So I've got that. I'm close to the end of three other books. I'm hoping to finish today. If not, that's no big deal. And the one thing that I've been going through and reading, which I'm sure will be sweeping booktube shortly, I'll just start a trend, is massage magazines from the 90s. Um, <laughs> when my massage therapy school closed, she sold it and it moved to the suburbs. She had a big sale and I found some awesome textbooks and reference books. I got lots of great stuff. She had a big stack of old massage magazines just for free. So I grabbed a bunch of them thinking, well, you know, who knows? So since I'm going through everything in my house, like a lot of people are, since we're all stuck at home all the time, um, I've been reading these. This is from 98, I think, but they're all from like 97 to 2001. And these are really fascinating. There's so many interesting articles in here and like stuff about like electric fields and how your body works and energy flow and stuff. Um, they show up in massage magazines now. I get two subscriptions now, uh, but they're not like in-depth articles like these seem to be. So I'm really enjoying not only the ads for cassettes <laughs> in here, but also just the articles themselves. They're just different than things are now. And one of my massage magazines um, that I get through my state slash national group, um, AMTA, American Massage Therapy Association, a lot of their stuff just seems to be kind of graphics. They'll have a big two page spread for like one chart. And I think, why, why is this taking this much space for this? Like, I don't, it seems to be not a ton of information. And this is just packed full of information. Not all of it applies, but it still sort of does in a weird way. So I am very happily taking my time going through these old massage magazines. Maybe that makes me an extra nerd. I don't know, but hey, I own it. That's fine. Um, yeah, I think that's it. That's enough rambling for me for one week. Oh my goodness. That's a lot. I don't think I will have a video up this Sunday. I, I don't think I'll have enough oomph to get together enough material to film another video and get it posted and ready to go before I get ready for Dewey's. So I will see you all back here on Tuesday, probably with a wrap up from the readathon. I hope you guys can join in. I will link to the website again in case you guys want to sign up to be a reader. It's shaping up to be a little different this time, it seems. One of the hosts is no longer hosting, which I totally understand. Um, so it's just a little different this time, but that's fine. I am looking forward to reading with friends and just reading on my own and getting through some stuff that I have been saving for a readathon like this for quite a while. So I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're all healthy and staying safe and staying home and taking care of yourself. Let me know what you're reading. If you read any of these, I'm sure I'll just have tons of responses for these magazines. Um, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.